Hi there, I'm Bob Plankers. I'm a senior technical marketing architect at VMware Corporation. And it's my pleasure to walk through what's new in vSphere 7 Update 2. This is the 10-minute turbo version. If you want the 35-minute longer version, that's out on our YouTube channel, uh, vSphere YouTube channel. Uh, go check it out. There's a lot of great stuff out there. Not to sound like uh, one of the YouTube stars or whatever, but ring the bell, and you, then you'll get notifications of our new posts. So let's get on with it. We don't have that much time. vSphere with Tanzu, formerly vSphere with Kubernetes. We renamed it in update one. Same stuff, just a different name. Integrated load balancing in update two. Uh, brought the Avi Networks, and now called NSX Advanced Load Balancer, along. It's fully integrated, completely supported, highly available, and all developers have to do is add it to their YAML files and away they go. Kubernetes 1.19, 1.19, it's uh, really honoring our commitment, the, the commitment that we made to our Tanzu customers to help keep them up to date with upstream Kubernetes releases. This is us doing that. Confidential containers, really interesting stuff here. AMD SEVES was something that we announced support for in update one. And as it turns out, Tanzu and SEVES are like peanut butter and chocolate. Two great tastes that taste great together, really advanced security for modern workloads. Private container registries. A lot of folks have got third party or external to Tanzu container registries that they wanted to use with Tanzu. And so we've made that a lot more flexible and secure and trustworthy. AI and ML, huge growth area, area that we can add a lot. We can bring simplicity from vSphere to bear on these workloads. NVIDIA support, our partnership with NVIDIA is burning bright. We've supported, now supported their Ampere GPUs, the latest uh, generation of that. Their A100 is like twice the performance of their, the previous flagship GPU, which is pretty cool. Multi-instance GPU, being able to share GPU among workloads. And before you stop me, you're going to say, hey, we could do that before. And yeah, that was true, but it was more of a time slice thing. Uh, kind of like the difference between Windows 3.1 and Windows NT, where, you know, the uh, per the protections are more hard-coded there. MIG has got protections that uh, aren't cooperative. They're, um, they're enforced in hardware, enforced with the data paths and things like that. And so much better way to do it, eliminates noisy neighbors and resource hungry neighbors, uh, lets you prioritize correctly. vSphere BitFusion 3.0. Uh, BitFusion is really cool for helping to operationalize access to GPUs and uh, for workloads that are AI and ML. We've got more native support for Li uh, APIs and libraries that uh, workloads would use. We've got operational enhancements, even just bringing utilities to ESXi that uh, help diagnose and configure GPUs. Really important stuff. A lot of feedback goes into these releases, and, and this is no different. Uh, to that point, if you've got feedback about our products and that, please tell us, because we love adding things that we know customers are looking for, and that would make your lives easier. And so please do that. Speaking of making life easier, patching. Oh, we always dislike patching and upgrades. Lifecycle Manager is really trying hard to fix that. And one of the big areas here, full support now for all of the Tanzu deployment models, all the NSXT deployment models. And yeah, one-stop shop to patch. Command line interfaces. A lot of folks are building clusters and want to automate it. And the vSphere... The vCenter server installer can now be automated. It's got vSAN bootstraps. It could be automated before, but better options for bootstrapping things and configuring the clusters to help speed things along. Speaking of speeding things along, desired image seeding. We can take a, a configured host and extract the images from it, the software depots and all that stuff so that we can propagate that to other hosts in a cluster. This is great for air gaps and isolated in environments as well. Last, suspend a memory. Really interesting operation here where we can suspend VMs to memory. Where we There's a lot of situations where we can't evacuate a host necessarily. We can't, uh, or maybe we don't want to. Maybe it's a standalone host, whatever. But the uh, um, a lot of situations where we don't want to do that. And we could actually suspend the VMs in memory, take a short just operational blip there, restart the hypervisor kernel itself, and then resume the VMs. So really cool stuff here. Uh, works with the ESXi quick boot technologies to do that. Availability and efficiency. 
you know, we don't talk about it very much, but nearly every feature in vSphere is aimed at mitigating or eliminating risk. And efficiency, ESXi is second to none in efficiency. It really, it really excels there, a purpose-built hypervisor. One of the big things here is persistent memory support in DRS, the initial placement algorithms for DRS, and then HA support. You might remember from update one, we did this for GPUs as well. And so now we're looking at the other workloads. And so persistent memory based workloads in the non-volatile DIM support, uh, NVRAM, not NVRAM, non-volatile DIMs, uh, we've got better options for recovering them if a host fails. VMotion auto-scaling, 25 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig networks needed manual tuning in order to take advantage of them fully for VMotion. That isn't the case anymore. No more manual tuning. We're done with that. Auto-scaling, auto-tuning, done. AMD Epic. Well, as you might imagine, Intel CPUs are different than AMD CPUs, and so AMD CPUs require new optimizations and... And then and as we see more and more workloads running on AMD Epic CPUs, we learn more about cache placement, NUMA, and you know power management, all of this stuff. And all of that has come to fruition here in vSphere 7 Update 2, where we've got a new AMD CPU scheduler that uh, has enormous performance improvements. You'll love it. Just upgrade to Update 2, and you get those. Now, you might ask, well, how much performance are, am I going to get out of this? All workloads are different. We we can't really tell you, but we know you're going to be happy. Who, who doesn't want some performance, you know? Come on. Speaking of performance, and actually uh, performance, network performance, I.O. performance, and latency. Real-time workloads, such as those that telcos have for their 5G deployments. We've been doing a lot of work in these areas. And they care about latency and predictable latency. Uh, unpredictable latency, variable latency is known as jitter, and they don't like that. Nobody likes jitter. And so using NIC pass-through, we've improved NIC pass-through so that it's uh, very low jitter, very predictable latency. A lot of workloads, not just the telco workloads. There's going to be a lot of stuff that enjoys that. Security and compliance, big release for these this area as well. Uh, Security has been in the news, ransomware affecting the whole industry. You know, and uh, you'll see more and more guidance from us over the next quarter, a uh, couple of quarters about ransomware and protecting yourselves and design, especially just a return to the basics with InfoSec uh, inf information security principles. And uh, so getting into the features here, ESXi key persistence, the ability to encrypt in different areas and on the edge, uh, being able to encrypt VMs without vCenter, perhaps, or being able to encrypt vCenter itself that sort of thing. There's going to be a lot of flexibility there. Native key provider. We've got a lot of customers that are using vSAN encryption, VM encryption, VTPM, heavy duty data rest protections, and they love it. You know, it really solves problems for them. But we've got a lot of customers that weren't or aren't yet. And uh, um, we asked them, what's the problem here? What, why aren't you doing this? And they said, well, you know, it could be easier to use. We said, hmm, okay. And we did it. We made it easier. And so vSphere, for a number of use cases now can take care of itself as far as being able to generate encryption keys and protect them and enable VM encryption and things. And so ESXi configuration encryption better protects secrets on disk. Uh, boot volumes, you know, how do we protect boot volumes? Can we do it in a way that helps customers be able to lifecycle their hardware? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of security implications to this, and it's really cool. So uh, configuration encryption happens automatically when you upgrade, and uh, yeah. If you've got a TPM, and we urge the use of TPMs, add them to your hardware, uh, add them to your systems. They're 40 bucks US. Add them to your systems where you can. And uh, if you've got a TPM installed on your host, it'll use that too. And new security and compliance guides. Uh, if you're doing, if you're getting audited for compliance with regulatory things, PCI DSS, HIPAA, NIST, NERC SIP, all that stuff, there's new guides, product audit guides that'll help your auditors understand vSphere security controls and how they apply to the regulations. That should save you some time. And go through the vSphere security configuration guide. That's our best advice on security baselines. Go through it. It's evolved quite a bit. Uh, and yeah, it's worth a spin through. So go and download that. There's new versions coming out soon that'll reflect update too. vSphere 
is not just here by itself, you know, it's a means to an end and those ends tend to be workloads. And so VMware tools and guest OS support improved. VTPM support for Linux distributions, very important there. Guest content distribution, it's like an internal content distribution network for uh, uh, inside of vSphere. Really cool, got some great granular permissions around it. Precision clock drivers, Windows time service can now directly take advantage of the precision time protocol support that's in vSphere 7. So let's wrap this up. Core.vmware.com, core.vmware.com slash blog. That's our new technical blog. We're doing a lot of blogging out here. And uh, yeah, it's pretty great. So thank you for being our customers. Hope you're all safe and sound. And uh, thanks for listening. Take care.